The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Typebond. So we're back in my home garage to start another simple DIY project with limited tools, limited materials, but it's gonna be really, really cool. So this is the planer stand we built last time. One thing that really helps when you have a planer is having extra work support, because sometimes you feed something in on the inside, gotta run around to the other side to catch it. It's nice to have some kind of support there. So we're gonna build an adjustable height work stand that you could use on the planer, you could use it as outfeed for a chop saw, whatever you wanna use it for. We're also gonna do this in a situation where I have limited power. Again, and I've got the Jackery Explorer 1000 here that just helped me along with charging my batteries. Still got the, uh, the music here, just in case we want some tunes. And I've got my laptop charging here at the same time. So speaking of the laptop, we're just gonna go in, grab the measurements, get them on paper, and start cutting the material. The whole stand is made with a couple of two by fours and a one by four. Okay, ready? Nice and wobbly? Yeah, hit it. Ah! On most woodworking projects, I advise people to not cut all of their parts right at the beginning, but that's when we're dealing with expensive hardwoods and incredibly precise measurements. On a project like this, it's totally fine to chop everything right at the start and then move into assembly. Who needs a laser? We'll assemble the legs of the stand first. A piece of scrap helps support the upright while I use a square to get it all aligned properly. By the way, if you have to work in a cold shop, it's a good idea to keep your glue inside the house and possibly take the parts into a warm place to help the glue cure. Type on 2 really doesn't want to be in anything lower than 55 degrees Fahrenheit or 13 degrees Celsius. Next. With a couple of screws at each joint, the legs are ready to go. Nine. To connect the legs to each other, we'll install a couple of stretchers. So I'm just measuring out the locations and then pre-drilling for screws. Go here. And here. Now this is one of those do as I say, not as I do situations. I really don't advise using your drill battery as a hammer. Thankfully these are like super non-critical. Battery on the drill? No, <laughs> the stretchers, oh. but I'm doing it anyway. I'll clamp the stretchers in place first and then drive the screws. Spin, spin. Get it. Now we can start cutting the 1x4s that will make up the adjustable work support. I gotta make four of these, so I'm just gonna do this. Well, I like to use both sides of my brain. We'll have two pieces glued and screwed to each leg, flush with the top. This provides a channel for the upright to travel in. Ooh, warm. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't want that to be up. If anything, I want it down so they're not in the way. Let's go! Well, it's a good time for a break. So what you're telling me is we don't need to put screw in there now. And this is a good time to take a break and tell you about this Jackery Explorer 1000. We got a lot going on in a very compact form factor here. You got a beautiful digital display. It tells you how much battery you have left, what kind of output or input if you're charging it. We of course have our AC ports here, DC, as well as our USB ports, which is great for all the devices. Just about everything I have charges via USB these days. And of course a cigarette adapter too. And if you need it, think about camping, having a built-in light is a pretty nice feature. Now to charge this thing up, you simply plug it into the wall, or I think one of the coolest features is being able to use the solar panels. 
Now while a solar power generator like this has some applications in the shop, you could certainly use certain small tools with it, and if you're in a low or no power situation, it could definitely get you out of a bind. What I'm thinking about are summer camping trips, just times when you're in a remote location, you don't necessarily have good access to electricity. Something like this is really gonna come in handy. And when we first moved to Missouri, if you follow me on social media, you might have seen, within like the first two weeks of being here, we had a massive flood, and I was not prepared for that. I watched my sump pump in the basement stop working in the middle of this flood, and just thought to myself, wow, we are screwed if this water level comes up too high, because I didn't have any kind of battery backup. So having a generator like this uh, in the house is going to be just a good insurance policy for us. Provide endless clean energy with solar panels and fast charging. These units are incredibly quiet, safe, and reliable. And you can support high power devices whether you're outdoors, inside the house during an outage, or in a shop space with limited power options. Right now, Jackery is having a big holiday sale that you don't want to miss with up to 28% off. So thanks for your support, Jackery, and let's get back to our build. Now let's cut the support piece to length, taking the measurement from the work stand itself. Nice. With the movable vertical pieces in place, I can mark their location so that I know where to drive the screws through the top support piece. I can then drop the piece in with some glue and drive a couple more screws. Always a good idea to pre-drill if you can. Now we need to drill a series of holes. The top hole goes all the way through both pieces. This might work. I'm trying to prevent some tear out. Okay. The rest of the holes will go on the movable piece and you could space them however you like. The spacing should be as close as you dare since you don't want the holes to run into each other, but the more holes you have, the more height options you have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I added seven total of eight holes. Let's do that on the other side real quick. Too cheap to spring for a Brad Point bet? Go faster. Oh yeah. <laughs> now we'll cut a couple of lengths of 3 8 inch dowel stock that'll serve as stops. Two holes up. Oh, hello! But, will it support my booty? <laughs> don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> all right, so I think that just about does it. Now, a couple things you could do to maybe make this a little bit better. First of all, if you have a brad point bit instead of a regular twist bit, that's gonna give you much more accurate placement of your holes, and that's critical for alignment. So if you have a little bit of uh, trouble getting your dowel to seat correctly, you could always make the outer holes a little bit bigger. Just give yourself a little bit of room and slack there and that should help you find this interior hole. That's what we did and it seems to work pretty well. You can also adjust the spacing and maybe the size of the dowel just to have more increments in heights. If you uh, find that this just is always a little bit off, you might try a different hole pattern, right? So there's a lot of creative ways that you can actually improve this design, but I think it's gonna work pretty well. Only thing left to do is to try it out with the planer and just see if it works. Oh, that's funny, you can go under the board too to get even higher. Yeah, Neato potato. This guy goes over here like that. Now we're gonna do a test run with the planer, but we don't have dust collection in here, so this stuff, the chips, they're just gonna go everywhere. Jason here is gonna hold the shop vac. The shop vac's gonna be plugged into the Jackery, and we're just gonna see if we can't make it a little less messy. 